Get to your dealer now for the Power and Performance Sales Event. Get up to seven years of Yamaha warranty protection free. Or earn up to $200 in dealer credit. Yamaha Power and Performance has never been a better value. Hey, in this week's weekly video fishing forecast, I'm going to have reports of myself along with the correspondents. We're going to have a rundown of some early season striper lures and a lineup of the events this upcoming weekend. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is March 14th. It's the second week of March and the New York State DEC has finally released their stocking numbers for the spring. Looks like a load of trout are coming our way very soon. There's going to be stockings in both Nassau and Suffolk County. As soon as we get the word, we're going to let you know. Some stripers are starting to show up and from New Jersey, the fisherman's Jenny Ackman gives us a rundown of her early season lures. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. Today, my little open boaters, we're going to be talking about some of my favorite lures for the spring run. Now, I just spent this whole evening organizing my fishing stuff. I don't know, every single time I organize the great wall of lures and my rods, I think I make progress cleaning it, but it just looks the same every single time. But looking at this wall reminded me to get stuff ready for the spring run, fishing up north, and I wanted to go over with you guys just a couple, only a few. I'm gonna spill the beans on some of the lures that I love to use. Only spilling the beans on the lures, not the locations where I'm fishing, because you know, loose lips sink ships and we don't want that this spring run. <laughs> so let's get into it. My first plug that I always have in my plug bag is a Shimano Colt Sniper. Actually, they called the current snipers now, but Shimano current snipers. And you could use an SP Minnow or a Hydro Minnow. I just personally like the current snipers. I'm, you know, the underdog, I'm fishing the underdog plug here. But this is a perfect example. You can see the hooks are rusty on why you should do spring cleaning like I am today with replacing rusty hooks because you do not want to be fishing rusty hooks. So the current sniper I love because it just cuts through the water. It can get nice and deep in the water column depending on how I reel it. And it's always my go-to. It's one of the first plugs I throw in spots where I'm fishing. If I don't see like a little top water bite or I don't see stripers swirling, I'm gonna throw this first and see if I can get into a bite. So the next plug is the new Tsunami little twitch glide bait we got here. This is new to Tsunami, but you should be seeing it in your local tackle shops and at the fishing shows. It is a perfect bunker imitator, has a little rattle action going on in there. And what's cool about it is you don't even have to do anything while you're retrieving it. You just cast it out, slowly retrieve. It does big zigzags in the water like that. And then a little bit faster, it does kind of more close zigzags. And then if you do give it a little twitch, it is a twitch bait. It flutters up and imitates a bunker that just got tail smacked by a 50 pounder. Like absolutely perfect imitation. So this is the one lure I'm gonna be fishing 90% of the time this spring run because this one spot that I fish, I figured it out like clockwork. It just works. The twitch baits always work. Twitch baits and gliders just always work. So make sure you get yourself one of these new hot glide baits from Tsunami. Moving on, we have the infamous NLBN. Of course, everyone has an NLBN in their plug bag any time of the season because they work. They're great. You can use them off the boat too. This one I've used for a while. You can see how beat up it is. This is the five incher in Hell Yeah Butter and it's one and a half ounces. And literally I love NLBN's jig heads because they have that corkscrew. So when you're putting on the soft plastic, the corkscrew and the soft plastic just connect. So when a striper bites it, it's not pulling that soft plastic down, potentially ripping it off the hook. So it's like the best bang for your buck because you're 
having like the soft plastic stay on there longer. You're not losing soft plastics. You don't have to go back to the tackle shop and buy more soft plastics. They stay on the hook longer and they are efficient. So shout out to those Florida boys for making something that stripers cannot resist. And now one last thing, the other infamous lure that you've probably heard me talk about countless times because I've caught my biggest stripers on it, the Gen X bucktail. Now this bucktail is just you've simple red head, white hair, some little red feathers on the back. I have caught my biggest stripers on it, caught my biggest last October on it off the surf, but in the spring run, there's one spot where I like to fish that has a super, super strong underwater current and I fish it a little bit differently. I'll use a three or a two ounce bucktail, something heavy that can make it down to the bottom quick and I just gently jig it off those rocks and there's one spot where I feel my bucktail drop down a little. It's almost like you're black fishing when you find a good hole, it drops down and then it gets smacked because those big stripers are hiding underneath that strong ripping current waiting for bait fish to get stuck, like just thrown into the ring basically. I'm basically like foaming at the mouth thinking about it because it's just like the best spot and I've caught, there was one night where I caught three like decent hefty lungers there and I was so tired but all on the same bucktail, fishing it the same way. Every single time it always works, it always pays off. So. I have a million plugs here on my wall. I'm only showing you those because I have an article coming out in the April edition going over more plugs for the spring run. And I want your intel on this. Come and see me at the Fisherman Magazine booth at the Edison Saltwater Expo. I'm gonna be there Friday and Saturday. And I'm gonna be doing an open boat where I'm asking you viewers what your favorite spring run lore is. So definitely come and see me. You're gonna be featured on next week's open boat and we're gonna be going through all your favorite lures and I'm really excited to hear what different lures you guys like to use. It's always fun talking to fellow anglers about their favorites and I can't wait to see you all on next week's open boat. We're gonna start it off with the New Jersey Saltwater Fishing Expo. That's from the 15th through the 17th. That's gonna be a huge show. There's gonna be a lot of tackle, vendors, uh, seminars going on, and must attend event. But now we're gonna head over to Tim C. Smith for more of the events. The Long Island Boat and Fishing Show is back at the Nassau Coliseum, March 15th through the 17th. Long Island's best boat and tackle dealers will be there with huge savings. Free parking all weekend and Friday free admission for first responders and military. For boat show information, visit nyboatshows.com. Saturday, March 16th is the 7th annual Fly Fishing Expo of Long Island at the Radisson Hotel in Hop Hog. Don't miss the best fly tires, manufacturers, guides, and more. Admission 10 bucks and kids under 18 free with a paid adult. Visit longislandflyfishingexpo.org for all the details. Marine Made of Lindenhurst is holding their annual spring sale March 23rd through April 6th. Bottom paint from $79 per gallon. Save big on engine parts, outboard oil, cleaners, waxes, and more. Daily raffles and your chance to win big prizes. Visit marinemade.com for all the details. The Babylon Fisherman's Flea Market is now better than ever in its new location. The American Legion 22 Grove Place Babylon. Save the date Sunday, March 24th, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Over 50 tables with new and used fishing gear. Get all your fishing questions answered by the Pro Roundtable, streaming live on Facebook. Get all the details at FishermanFleaMarket.com. The first ever Port Jefferson Flea Market is Sunday, April 7th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Port Jefferson Moose Lodge, 37 Crystal Book Hollow Road, Mount Sinai. Over 50 tables with new and used fishing gear. Get your fishing questions answered by the Pro Roundtable. Get all the details at portjeffersonfishingfleamarket.com. Take a look at thefisherman.com slash events for more details. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. 
We got some reports for you this week. Let's head on over to the map and see what I've been hearing. Starting in Montauk, Captain JR told me that their first Nantucket trip was extremely successful. They're running another one. That's going to be on the 15th. They're going to be going for Cod, Pollock, Hake, Haddock, Cunners, Cusk, Ling, and much more. We will have an update on that trip come next week. We'll give you the report on that. Captain Joe from the King Cod, he's running some long-range cod trips. He has a lot of confidence in these trips. He's going Saturday. They're doing a 1 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's going to be limited to 20 passengers. Everything's included. It's a buck 60. Text 631-605-1404 for more information. Definitely suggest that one. Then in Patchwork, Pablo J and J, he said that the lakes in the area have been coming alive. Trout, yellow perch, they're keeping the anglers busy. Some pickerel in the mix as well over at Patchwork Lake. Uh, for the pickerel, we did suggest that live shiners, that live bait is really getting them to hit. Piece of night crawler for the yellow perch, that seemed to be the ticket fish that under a float or on a jig head. West Lake has been the spot for trout. Pavel said he got out himself. He had four on small gold spoons. Those are cast masters, little Cleos, spinners, stuff like that. Then heading over to Islip, Mike from Saltwater's Tackle. He said the Great River area is still a good bet for perch. Again, he said that the whole night crawler has been the ticket to the bigger fish. That's on a jig head. Not much on the local holdover stripers, according to Mike, but he did hear some schoolies were getting picked away in the, on the southern part, not on the southern part, on the north shore of the island, up in the western sound from the shore. Those fish are starting to hit soft plastics. Guys are starting to get in on that. Head on over to Bernie's, west of that. They also said they confirmed that there's a lot of small stripers moving in in the Coney Island area. Small shad bodies, the four inch model from Gags has been a killer. He says he can't even keep them on the shelves, but if he can't find them, other four inch soft plastics will work as well. Said there's a few herring at Coney Island and Magnolia. That's been more on the hit or miss side. The stripers, the small stripers that is, have been showing up in better numbers. Tide is playing a role in these fish, so keep track of your tides. Jim over at Miller Place, they're open for the rest of the year now. They just got in there for seven days a week. He did tell me Westlake and Patchogue, he confirmed that report that there has been some trout being caught over there. He'll be there uh, seven days a week, Sunday and Monday 9 to 1, Tuesday through Saturday 9 to 5. Nuno from Tyrebore, he's up in the Western Sound. He said that the Hudson, the Passanic, they both have some striper action. But closer home to Pelham, Manhasset and the Little Neck, there's been some small fish as well. He told me for live bait, the blood worms have been the ticket for the bait fishermen. And then small soft plastics in the four inch range, again, have been the ticket for those looking to cast artificials. Uh, I got this picture sent to me, Carmine Patron. He's showing this early season schooling from the Western Sound from the surf before the rain on Friday. Nice job, Carmine. And if you do have a notable catch, email me, mbroderick at thefisherman.com. Going to try and get into the video or for the magazine for that matter, maybe the April issue. Send them on over. <music>
from Northport, the Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle Report. Hey, we're in the shop. Uh, just got another batch of uh, knives. We have to shop on, uh, sharpen on top of all this uh, stuff that we do with the service work. Phil is busy knocking out reels. We're doing a lot of spooling up new lines, oiling, greasing stuff up, cleaning it, doing repairs. You got to bring it down to the shop because I'm telling you, everybody is waking up at one time. The fish are here. It was awesome. I went over, I checked out the hail site shop, you know, we're starting to bring in stuff each week. And uh, the shop was just so excited to have it stocked with even more rods, reels, uh, lures, bait, all that kind of good stuff you want to see in the Huntington shop and the Northport shop. Uh, checking out Huntington, look at it. It is just so surreal. This is that beautiful time of the year when you live here on the North Shore of Long Island. And uh, well, anywhere on Long Island at that part, it's just a crisp, cool air, blue skies, fair winds, and wonderful water. It's like, it's magical. You look across the harbors and it's just so cool. And you know what else? They're packed with bait. We got that shrimp, just like we talked about. It's ahead of schedule. Everywhere you look at bulkheads, docks, uh, reed grass, there's eel grass rather. There's uh, so many shrimp. It's just crazy. And the fish are here. The fish are here now. This is that time to get to it. Normally what we would see, right? Everybody's chasing trout. And then you're thinking about striped bass. No, it's the second year in a row. Right now we're looking at everybody's on top of the bass. And then we're going to be going into trout. And guess what? You know, I wouldn't be surprised. Porgies are going to show up earlier than normal. And uh, if you're into blackfish, go get some clams. Go to your favorite blackfish spot and try it out because fish are here. I just know it. I can feel it. I can smell it. I can taste it. Can't you? It's so exciting. I hope to see you at the shop and as always a bid you peace and tight lines. With the fly and freshwater report we do have Paul McCain. He's got his big show this weekend as well. Hello Matt. Well here I am. I'm getting in a little walk. I needed a little break from all this work we're doing on this uh, this show. Kenny and I are working very hard. This is going to be the greatest show we've ever put on uh, a lot of good vendors a lot of good tires a lot of great presentations uh it's going to be great uh and that's this saturday at nine o'clock in the radisson and hop hog so i hope to see everybody there now as far as the fishing goes can you believe this it is it's going to be 70 degrees today 70 unbelievable i hope i hope this is how it's going to go and i predict we're going to start seeing stripers in the back bays pretty soon. I am hearing of stripers caught in the western part of the sound and also uh, beginning Jamaica Bay, schoolies. But it is early, but we're hopefully, hopefully we're going to see a lot more. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. This is, this is going to be a great, great season. I just feel it. Um, it's going to be warming up and... Man, it just is really, really going to be nice. As far as the fresh water goes, everything was blown out with the amount of rain that we got. The streams, they're coming down, and but it's going to take a few days to come down for, to fishable levels. Even the Connecticut was way up, but that drops pretty fast. And of course, there are tons of fish there. Um, you know, in a few weeks, we're going to have opening day in... Uh, as far as the Carmens and the Nessequak, and both are being stocked. They should be stocking the streams this week and next week, and the ponds. They're all gonna be stocked. It's gonna be fishing go all over the place. And if this weather stays like this, it's gonna be great, a great season. I can't wait to get out in my boat. I can't wait to get out my kayak, and I certainly love fishing the ponds in my canoe. So. Hopefully, hopefully this is going to hold. I, I'm done with the winter. So until next week, tie lines, everybody. Let's check in with Max Finch from the Connecticut side of the Western Sound. This past week, the North Harbor was loaded with uh, winter herring. That was really nice. We saw a lot of anglers getting on them. You know, shop employee Tyler, too, he had a bunch of them. Uh, I would say, like, behind Nauk Aquarium's been good on those fishing docks. You can go down to the beach at the lower tides and fish the sandbar. 
and then you can fish Cove Marina, <clears throat> and then you can fish, you know, right in front of Vets Park. We're loaded up on Sabiki rigs, but we saw a lot of people getting them, and that's really nice to see. Last year, they showed up really late, too. A lot of people pickle them or, you know, freeze them for bait in the spring. They, walk, they work awesome for stripers. And then our local rivers are fishing well. The levels were really high, so after those heavy rains. So once they come back down, they should still fish good. And then moving on to next week, we should see that, you know, the bass start to get a little more active in our area. I've heard of a couple uh, stripers caught on the beach on small soft plastics. But other than that, most anglers going up to the Housatonic and still fishing, you know, the upper parts with their favorite lead heads and soft plastics. Thanks and good luck. Raul Ortiz has a report from around the city area. Well, uh, things are off to a good start. We, after all this rain we had uh, every weekend pretty much for the last two, three weeks, uh, fish are active. Uh, you can catch fish right now anywhere around the city or in your back bays, even out if, if you were in Long Island or in the Long Island Sound somewhere, definitely gonna run into some fish. Uh, SP minnows and soft plastics like the tsunamis, plastic with the white shads, I've been doing good. Um, Besides that, um, just a quick shout out to the guys, uh, Gian, Low Walker, my buddy Joe, nothing ever changing, Speedy, the real Bass Kings, and my buddy Victor for sharing their photos with me. I'm telling you guys right now, um, time is now. Um, the season has started. Um, season is still closed, but you're still allowed to catch and release. Remember that. Um, anyway, tight lines to all, and back to you, Matt. Mike Sentry has his report from Staten Island. Thanks, Tim and Matt. Hope all is well. Well, guys, Mike Sentry here from Anglers of Legend Sportfish, Boatworks, and Seafoods. Well, nice report today. Jason Wilk reported on social media bass from 27 to 30 inches being caught, incoming tide on the Jersey side, uh, Raritan Bay, and he was using the uh, bloodworm balls. Basically, wrap a whole bunch of bloodworms and then into your uh, circle hook and just throw them out there, incoming tide. So here's one photo I got from him. So congrats to him and his friend. With that said, the weather's definitely shaping up to be a spectacular run. Plenty of bass are in the bay for about two weeks now. And um, water temperatures are about 47 degrees. So once they hit around that 50 degree mark, it's literally game on. And I mean game on by they hit anything, literally anything. So with that said, we'll be out there this weekend doing some fishing. Don't forget about the Edison Expo show. Uh, this weekend in New Jersey and uh, that's about it guys so tight line guys see you guys next week Ben Gilmore has awaited some Capos Costa Rica guys how's it going this is Ben Gilmore down here in Costa Rica hope you're all doing well I got this week's fishing report for you today guys just got back from an offshore trip we caught a 300 pound blue marlin today plus three sailfish really nice day on the water just a couple of days back we had six sailfish so we got a nice sailfish bite going on right now there's a couple of marlin out there not too many at the moment the water's still pretty warm it hit 87 degrees today there's a few big bull mahi mahi out there as well and there's still a really strong wahoo bite if you can manage to land them they've been biting off a lot of people the last couple of weeks whilst we're sail fishing inshore guys there's been a lot of corvinas sea bass showing to sardines fished on the bottom or jigs and some really nice snook and rooster fish along the beaches also hope to see you down here in costa rica this is ben gilmore here at the marina pez vela see you soon yeah, the Fisher Magazine, we got our apparel store, hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts. Got it all online now. Free shipping. Orders over $100. It is a great gift for yourself. Visit thefisherman.com slash shop or click on the card in the upper right. Hey, remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we do post a new video on YouTube. Support our correspondents, visits their websites and their social media pages. Don't forget this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Music. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast and our other content. We got the Long Island Boat Show this weekend. We got the Fly Show this weekend. We have an event up in Edison, New Jersey. A lot of stuff going on. The weather is wonderful as well. It's beautiful out. Time to go fishing. We will see you right here next week. Thefisherman.com.